Hello everybody. One of the subjects that we are taking at the Kobar University is the human anatomy for both the students of dentistry and pharmacy. As you know, human anatomy is regarded as the father of medicine. If you can define human anatomy, human anatomy is the science that deals with the structure and function of the body. We take each structure and we should know the function of each. We divide them into many systems. Usually we start with an introduction to human anatomy to know about some important terms about anatomy and then to know about the basic structures of the body. What's the skin? What are the muscles, bones, cartilage? And then we will talk about the systems in detail. For example, we have the upper limb, the lower limb, thorax, abdomen, pelvis, and the head and neck. If we discuss today the thoracic, we, you know that the thorax is one of the important systems in our body. Usually we are talking about the wall of the, that part of the body. We will take the thoracic wall and then we can discuss the contents of the thoracic cavity. And of course, one of the most important parts of the thoracic cavity is the heart through which we are living and the blood throws through our, of all of our body. One of the most important devices uh, today, which we are using for this study in the human anatomy is the anatomist table. We are using this table. It contains every detail of the human body. We can use it instead of the uh, human cadaver. As we mentioned, today we are talking about the thorax. What's the thorax? We can discuss it on this. The thorax is the, the region that lies between the neck and the abdomen. Like any other part of the body, we will start talking about the thoracic wall, and then we will talk about the thoracic cavity. The thorax, or what's called the chest cavity, or the thoracic cage, has anterior wall, has lateral wall, and then it has posterior wall, and below we have an inferior wall, which separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity through the diaphragm. So we can talk about each part in detail. Of course, when we are studying the human body, we have a procedure which is called the dissection. Dissection meaning means the separating the parts of human body in layers. So we should remove the skin. Below the skin, we have the superficial fascia. Then we can see the deep structures. As you know, we have then the skin is removed, the muscles. We reach the thoracic wall or the thoracic cage. We say that the thoracic cage has anterior wall. This is the anterior wall. Laterally, we have lateral wall. Posteriorly, we have the posterior wall. And below, we have the diaphragm. The anterior wall of the thorax, thorax consists of the sternum and the costal cartilage on each side. We have on the left side and the, on the right side, we have the costal cartilage. This is regarded as the anterior wall. Then we have the lateral wall. The lateral wall is formed by the ribs, these are the ribs. And between them, we have the intercostal spaces. Between the ribs, we have the intercostal spaces. So this is the anterior wall, the lateral wall. And then we have the posterior wall. The posterior wall lies posteriorly on our back. Of course, it is formed by the thoracic vertebrae. We have the thoracic vertebrae. These are all the thoracic vertebrae that form the posterior wall of the thorac thoracic wall. Then. Below, we have the inferior wall here. The inferior wall is the diaphragm, which is the main muscle of respiration. This diaphragm separates the chest cavity from below, from the abdominal cavity. The anterior wall is formed by the sternum and the costal cartilage. The sternum lies in the midline of the chest. It consists of three parts. The upper part is called the manubrium of the sternum. The middle part is called body of sternum and the lower part is called the xiphoid process. Then we have the, laterally we have the ribs. As you know, we have 12 pairs of ribs, 12 on the right side and 12 on the left side. We have the first rib, second, third, fourth, fifth, then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and lastly, we have the 12th rib. The ribs are divided into three groups. We have the true ribs, the false ribs, and we have the floating ribs. What are the true? The upper seven pairs of the ribs, they are called the true ribs. From the first 
2D. Seven, these are called true ribs. Why? Because they are directly attached to the sternum through the costal cartilage. Then we have the eight, nine, and the 10. These are called the false rib. They are not attached directly to the sternum. They are attached to each other. Then they are attached to that of the seven through their costal cartilage. Lastly, we have the 11 and the 12 ribs. These are regarded as the floating. They have no anterior attachment. As you see, there is no anterior attachment like the other ribs, so they are called floating ribs. Regarding the chest cavity or the thoracic cavity, the chest cavity consists of a median portion or a median partition in the midline. This part of the chest is called the mediastinum. And then we have two laterally placed lungs which are covered by a membrane which is called the pleura. So the chest cavity in the midline we have an area. It is regarded as a median partition. This is called the mediastinum that lies beneath the sternum. Laterally on both sides we have the lungs. This is the left lung and we have the right lung which is covered by a membrane which is called the pleura. If you can see the detail, this middle part on this view is called the mediastinum. It contains many important structures, for example, the heart, the esophagus, the trachea, and many other important structures. And laterally, of course, we have the lungs on each side, the left, on the left lung on the left side and the right on the right side. This is the right lung and this is the left lung. With the anatomist table, we have also many models which are using them for the demonstration to know the detail of each part. For example, when we are talking about the thoracic cage or the chest wall, we say that we have anterior wall. The anterior wall is formed by the sternum and the costal cartilage. These are the costal cartilage. Laterally, we have the ribs and the intercostal spaces. And posteriorly, we have the thoracic part of the vertebrae. The anterior wall, we have the sternum. The sternum is divided into three parts. We have manubrium of sternum, body of sternum, and below we have the xiphoid process. We have an important point here. Between the manubrium and the body of sternum, we have an angle which is called the sternal angle or the angle of fluid. This is important because we can find this angle on our body. It is attached to the second costal cartilage or the second rib. From this point, we can count the intercostal spaces, and these are very important for many procedures in clinical practice. Laterally, we have the ribs and the intercostal spaces. The intercostal spaces contains three muscles of respiration, which are called the intercostal muscles. They are called external intercostal, internal intercostal, and innermost intercostal muscles. As we discussed before, the ribs are divided into three groups. We have the true ribs, the false, and the floating ribs. The true ribs are the upper seven pairs of ribs. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are called the true ribs because they are directly attached to the sternum through the costal cartilage. The number eight, nine, ten, they are called false. Why? Because they are attached to each other and then through one costal cartilage, they are attached to that of the seventh rib. Lastly, we have the floating. The floating, they are 11 and 12. These ribs are only attached posteriorly to the thoracic vertebrae. They have no anterior attachment. As, uh, it is clear here, these are the 11 and the 12 ribs. Below, we have the inferior wall of the thorax. Thorax. The inferior wall is formed by the diaphragm. Diaphragm is the most important muscle of respiration. This is the diaphragm. It is regarded as a septum. It is a musculotendinous septum which separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity. And of course, it is regarded as the inferior wall of the chest. Regarding the thoracic cavity or the chest cavity, it is divided into a median partition, which is called the mediastinum, this area. Of course, it, is, it has a detail. The mediastinum is divided into superior and inferior, and then the inferior is divided into anterior, middle, and posterior mediastinum. Laterally, we have the two lungs which are covered by a membrane which is called the pleura. This is the right lung, and this is the left lung. The right lung is usually larger than the left. 
it consists of three lobes. The left lung, usually it is smaller because of the presence of the heart and it consists of two lobes. Thank you all for watching this video. Hope it was an important and scientific subject. The human anatomy is very important. Today we are discussing the human anatomy as clinical anatomy because all, almost always we are saying that a good doctor and a good surgeon is a good anatomist. Hope you are all fine and thank you and goodbye.